All right, it's Chinese kit time. This time it's a uh, 12008 or a C08113. I don't know what it is, um, but I do know it's from China. Get it out onto a tray. This one's going to be very nice. This is going to be an extensive build here. Uh, looking forward to this one. Let's take a look. Got some paperwork here. PC board. And look at this. Look at this. Look at these strangely shaped transistors. Vacuum tubes. And these look, look like these vacuum tubes have been looked like they were in the back of a VW van for, I don't know, 20 years. They're <laughs> <laughs> they look really beat up. Hopefully they work. All right, so vacuum tubes. Cool. Uh, I think it's a, some type of preamp or I don't know if it's a headphone amplifier or a preamp or something. I don't know. But it's got vacuum tubes, so I thought that would be cool. Uh, let's see here. Let's check out the instructions, which are all in Chinese. Oh, here's a schematic that I can read. Input, output. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Looks just like a preamp. Looks like a vacuum tube preamp. And I don't think this will drive headphones. LM 1875. So maybe, maybe it'll drive it. Yeah. No, these are pretty heavy duty drivers. Yeah, it'll, it's probably like a headphone driver. Cool. So stereo. Yeah. Official, uh, official look like pentodes. Yeah, cool. Uh, here's a parts list. Okay. Check out the PC board. Nice quality board. Uh, everything is marked, so we don't need any instructions for most of the stuff. Ooh, look at this. It's a snack. Thermal grease. No, it's not a snack. And something wrapped in tissue paper. Something special. Ah. Little ceramic sockets for the vacuum tubes. Nice. Real ceramic. Not plastic. Cool. All right. Let's start the build here. I'm going to rearrange the camera. All right. I know all my uh, my longtime viewers, or maybe not even not longtime viewers, but my super fans, love my stories. <laughs> so I had uh, in Inside Dog out in the park today, out in the morning. It's just uh, just after noon now, just after lunch, and uh, Inside Dog reminded me I should tell his favorite story when Dog got Bo. So we'll get to the story when Dog got Bo, but I wanted to talk about uh, dogs in North America. So some people may have thought that dogs came over with the Spanish or the, the uh, Europeans, but dogs were already here. Dogs have been here since the Native Americans have been here. They actually brought them over with them. They had domesticated dogs. And uh, the oldest fossilized records of dogs in Northern California is like 10,000 years old. So they've been here a very, very long time. And Native Americans had a very close relationship with dogs. Uh, they used them for protection and for hunting and, and other things. Um, And they were family members. They weren't just like cattle or something like that. They, they had names, uh, and they had special, uh, special tasks and stuff. So the tribe that I'm associated with, the Kuruks, they used uh, uh, dogs for hunting. Let's see. These are a hundred km. So we will put these hundred kms in there. Um, so they used them, I know, in two specific ways. One was for hunting deer, and one was for hunting elk. So for hunting elk, they would use the dogs to herd the uh, elk to locations where it was then easier to hunt them. You know, you know, 
box canyon or something. I don't know. They would help move the elk around. For uh, deer, uh, deer was a prized food. Uh, since the tribe was on a river, they ate a lot of fish. But deer meat was a really prized commodity, and the deer hunters were special. They they would do ceremonies and stuff before they went on a hunt. It's actually bloodletting and stuff involved. But um, they would use the dogs when they went deer hunting. And they did deer hunting by um, snares. They would set up snares. And then they would have the dogs chase the deer into the snares. So That's pretty cool. Let's see here. So there's a myth uh, in the Kuruk tribe called when dog got bow. We're talking about bow and arrow, right? Bow is a, a weapon. And uh, all right, where's my? Let me measure these. Measure these. These are those terrible blue resistors with the four bands on them that you can't ever figure out what the darn value is. All right, these are 1K ohms. Okay, so these are all 1K ohms. So, um, before there were animals, there were these super beings, um, the uh, spirit people. And the spirit people created things. And there was a spirit person that created a lot of the animals. And this particular spirit creature, spirit person, lived in a location and had made a lot of the animals. And the animals lived with him. And um, he was aware of the, uh, the human animals that were that had been created and they were coming. And, and so he had lived there a long time just with the animals. And he thought that he needed to do something special for the animals before the humans came. And so he decided to give them presents and he decided to make bows for them. So he spent time making wonderful bows and he put them in his lodge against the wall, all of these bows that he had made. And um, one day he, he told the animals, each of you will receive a bow. I will, I will, I will give you a bow. And uh, he said, let's all go to sleep. And in the morning when you wake up, when you wake up, you can go over and you can pick out the bow that you like. So all the animals decided to go to bed. And uh, let's see, let's try this value here. Right. I'll measure these. These resistors are 22k ohms. All right. So all the animals went to bed. Now, Coyote, being clever, or at least he thought he was clever. So I'm going to stay up all night. I'm not going to go to sleep. I'm going to be there right the first thing in the morning. I'm going to be able to get the very best bow. So Coyote tried everything and tried propping his eyes open with little sticks and stuff. And he just tried to stay up all night. And eventually he failed and went to sleep. And of course he wasn't the first to wake up because he had stayed up such a long time trying to stay awake. And uh, Dog was the first animal to wake. So Dog went over and got a bow. He got the very, very nicest bow he saw. I think I'll slaughter these down. And then uh, Cougar and Beaver and the other animals went around and got their bows. And then finally Coyote woke up. And all the good bows had been taken. In fact, all the bows had been taken. There was only one left, and it was not a very good bow. 
And so Coyote didn't have a good bow to hunt with. He was, he had to go back to his old ways. He would go to a, uh, a flat opening in town there, not town, but out in the, out in the, out past the lodge where there was some flat ground where there was gophers and he would just have to wait for the gophers and eat the gophers and the other animals had bows and uh, so dog had the best bow and he figured that uh, it would be best if he just like went and, and got everybody else's bow you know threatened threaten them or whatever and go and get the other animals bows and so for a long time he went around and rounded up all the other animals bows and he got around to taking a uh, wolf's bow they had been friends and wolf told him we're no longer friends he says if i see you on the mountain next time he says i'm going to eat you and so dog was kind of on his own and uh so he went back to the lodge where the spirit person was. This is not sitting on the board very long. Well. But the spirit person was gone and the, the uh, animal people had moved in and he met them and he said, uh, 22K, wasn't there another 22K? I'm missing some parts here. Um, he said, let's be companions. He says, let's go hunting together. He says, I will give you my bow and we will be hunting partners and companions and we will go, this is, oh, these are 22. Um, we will go hunt together and live together. So that's the way man received the bow but sometime later dog, dog oh shoot ah, I gotta clamp it down better uh, dog told the animal people the bow is not totally good the bow may kill me and the bow may kill you it is not altogether good. And you might be shot at with a bow. You might die of the bow. And he said that as long as the human people walk the land, there will be killing. So that's the story of how Dog got Bo, and kind of a warning to man that there will be, will be warfare now that there are weapons. So the... Uh, I guess, oh, a lot of this value. Let's do this value. The uh, Westerners, the Spanish, and then the Europeans and stuff came over. And I think it was the Spaniards who had dogs. And they trained their dogs to kill Indians. Oh, not a very nice thing, but... The particular breed of dog that the Native Americans had is claimed to have disappeared. It was eradicated or, I don't know, it's just gone now. No one can, no one can identify 
the original breed and oops, oops. 4.7k these are all 4.7k 4.7k there we go there's a 40 there's this 47 ohm as well I have to be careful Inside dog got to play with a friend of his today. There's a white Samoa Samoa dog that shows up at the park. Big fluffy white dog, Casper. Casper the friendly ghost. And him and Casper were having a good time. Casper likes to wrestle. And he's about three times three times the size of Inside Dog. <laughs> but that doesn't that doesn't slow Leo down. No, sir. He's a tough little dog. Let's slaughter these down. Uh oh. I think I put in too many. That's the problem. They start crowding each other and then you can't turn them upside down because you can't be, bend the leads the right way. Let's see if I can finagle these. One that way, one that way, one that way, one that way. Maybe. I was reading about uh, dogs and other tribes, and some of them they would have uh, one family would have up to 30 dogs. 30 dogs. That's a lot of dogs. And each dog had a name and each dog would would uh, understand his name and that's pretty cool. I said some dogs were they used for like I said protection, hunting. They said one particular dog was like a hairless dog and it was used for healing like sore muscles and stuff right like a heating pad right <laughs> like a canine heating pad it's kind of weird haven't heard that before oh shoot did it again Need to tighten things. Uh, am I still on camera? Not really. Huh? Yeah, close enough. Okay. Uh, this is not the best soldering here. Touch these up. There we go. I don't think those are supposed to touch. I don't think so. Let me. Let me start over here. If you see a if you see a bridge and you're not sure whether there's a trace underneath it or not, stop right away <laughs> and check. See, I don't think no, these are not supposed to touch. These are not supposed to touch. Yeah, that's better. Alright. Always double check yourself while you're while you're working. There we go, that's better. Much better. Okay, what's next? I got some more. I got some more resistors here. What values are these? I think these are 4.7s. So double check. Double check. Yep, 4.7. Gotta be some more here somewhere. Hmm. Where might they be? There we go.
very hot here lately. And I would turn on the air conditioner, but it makes a lot of noise. So I'll do a little bit more, maybe save some for tomorrow. Let's see here. All right, next value. Hello. Oh, not clipped onto the right one. There we go. Uh, 470K. All of the uh, Native American myths about dogs always have dog choosing Dog choosing man, not the other way around. It's always dog who chooses man. It's interesting. I think I will solder some more without you guys and uh, turn on the air conditioner. So see you later. All right, it's half together. The tube sections together. I haven't mounted the uh, the solid state part with the heat sink yet. Um, and there's a reason for that that I'll get to. Uh, there's a blue LED that lights up the the tube, which is kind of cool. That's usually done these modern things just to make it look cool. Okay, so raise your hand if you have a tube straightener. Uh, the the leads on the tubes are all bent up, so uh, I do have a I do have a tube pin straightener. So that came in handy. Haven't used that in years. Uh, so what's wrong with the kit? Well, it's missing a capacitor over there. It's got one over there, missing one capacitor. It only came with one blue LED, missing an LED over there. And guess what? It only came with one amplifier. There's none for over here. So this kit's a fail, fail, fail. <laughs> but anyway, um, but we can play with it anyway. Uh, let's see here. I couldn't even figure out who I bought this from. I was gonna ask the guy if they sent me another one, but I can't even figure out who I bought it from. Uh, this is probably really hard to see on camera, but anyway, there's an input, there's the tube section, and then there's an output. So uh, this is input, this is output, just through the tube section. And then they pull off the output and they send it through these modern solid state amplifiers. So that's just, that's kind of the boring part. The cool part's the tube, tube part. Anyway, so we can get at least input to output on tubes, right? So you would think, okay, uh, the circuit looks like it's probably a cathode follower. Um, so maybe a gain of one, maybe a half or something, you know, but you know, maybe probably not a lot of gain, pro probably close to one. Um, so we can inject a signal on the input and measure it. So here is the, um, here's the input. I'm putting in one volt peak to peak. So 200 millivolt scale, one volt peak to peak. And here's the output and the output is on, get it? the 20 millivolt range. So one volt turns into 20 millivolts. Uh, yeah, that's not cool. Anyway, so it's got zero gain. It's got negative, uh, let's see, it goes from a thousand millivolts to 20 millivolts. So 500 to one, can I do that 50 to one? Anyway, it's a lot to one. <laughs> anyway, it's way down. And if you look closer at this waveform uh, it yeah maybe it's looking okay but it's really really poor so then I thought well maybe there's something wrong going on here that's really really bad so uh, let's swap the tube shall we if they're warm they're not very warm because it's only 24 volts 
Oh, they're toasty. I mean, I don't want to hang on to them for very long, but I can at least do this by hand. All right, turn the power back on. All right, so it has to uh, heat up again. Yeah, there we go. So now we look over here and woo, bigger signal, yay. So one of the tubes is dead or very, very weak. So there you go. There's another part that's dead. Remember I told you that they were in the back of the Volkswagen van for years? <laughs> anyway, so now one volt in gives you, gives you uh, 20, 40, 60, 80. So a thousand in gets you 80 out. Still, that's less than 10 to one, right? 12 to one, uh, <laughs> terrible. Anyway, uh, if do you notice anything else strange about this thing, let me invert it. Uh, yeah, so now we can match the two up. So, uh, yeah, it's not even close. It's like a class A amplifier that's really bad on one end. Um, so it, it, it's doing okay here, but over here it's just falling apart. So, um, so what do I think of this kit? <laughs> Fail, fail, fail! <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> run away, run away. Um, yeah, so this is durable. It's durable. Um, I'm not gonna measure the distortion. I'm not gonna do anything. It's just a bad kit. Uh, anyway, I don't know how much I paid for it, uh, but I, uh, I built it so you don't have to. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, well. Hope you enjoyed the story. Oh, maybe that's the best thing about the video.